My name is Emiliana Tapia and I come from Spain. I work for Doctors of the World, Médicos del Mundo. And um, we have projects in Spain and uh, overseas. In Spain, um, we had, until 2012, we had a, a universal coverage health system. And I think we had um, maybe one of the best uh, systems in uh, Europe because it was very efficient, it wasn't uh, too expensive and uh, it was publicly um, funded and it covered uh, everybody and everybody, I mean everybody uh, that, I, that uh, was a Spanish uh, or not that just happened to be in Spain at that time. So anybody, any migrant uh, undocumented that came to Spain will have uh, access the same access to the same services, the same quality services than everybody else. But that changed in 2012, um, and it was um, theoretically as a consequence of the of the economic crisis uh, that uh, all Europe have um, have been uh, plundered into. But in reality, uh, it's uh, linked to a change in the, in the in the democracy that we have in reality and in the um, High in the conservative um, in Spain, but also in Europe. So uh, the first measure that the government took in 2012 was uh, a new um, a new uh, regulation, whereby all migrants that were not uh, that were undocumented were excluded from the health system, and there were only five exceptions to that, and that was uh, pregnant women, uh, minors uh, under 18. Um, women that have been trafficked and uh, any uh, illness that uh, require an emergency response. Although under those five cases uh, migrants could um, have uh, access treatment, the reality was that when they were trying to, to access them, uh, it was not always possible. So um, a lot of civil society has organized uh, for the last five years to fight the, that uh, law and to resist, um, especially from the medical profession, to resist to the, um, uh, the obligation of not treating uh, migrants, undocumented migrants. Um, despite uh, all the fights, uh, all the demonstrations, uh, it has been very difficult to, to change um, not even one single uh, bit of that law. But um, fortunately for us, uh, in the last um, six months, we had a change of government, and that uh, has provided um, with a, a new a, a reform to that uh, existing law that uh, allows um, migrants that are undocumented to access the health service. However, uh, there is a, um, there is a problem in the sense that a lot of the um, other um, laws that are in Spain related to illegal migration are, have been limiting, in fact, the, uh, the rights of, of these migrants. So in reality, although we have a law that will allow them to access the services, the health services, because of the migration legislation, this is not as um, universal as it was before. So there's still a lot of work for us to do on this uh, I'm Anuj Kapilosham. I'm based in Queen Mary University in London. I'm an associate professor of political health policy and intersectionality. Um, and a long standing member of People's Health Movement, uh, first through my engagement with the JSA, Jatswasta Pyar in India, and subsequently uh, through the UK PHM. I lead the PHM Scotland and I'm a member of the, uh, the coordinating group uh, of UK PHM. And, um, like you said, there are a number of very similar issues that Europe is facing, but I think uh, one of those uh, that we've been um, debating on and also actively campaigning around and mobilizing around is the uh, saving the NHS and keeping the NHS public. And it, uh, there's been a systematic um, dismantling of the NHS over the years through the creation of clinical Groups. And also more recently, which we know very little about, was through the introduction of technologies like GP apps, through which uh, now uh, 
people uh, can only access services through the GP app system. And what we hear anecdotally in the in the area is that it is also resulting in greater inequities because these uh, GP apps are floated by certain companies and certain kinds of local health authorities um, and clinical commission groups, and uh, which are more deprived than others. And uh, that is resulting in a lot of access and equity issues. So one of the issues that we are discussing on doing a little bit more first, understanding the problem and doing some kind of participatory community-based research on is uh, the, looking at the impact of these apps and what happens when people uh, are taken off lists and then sent, uh, are only able to access services, primary health care services there through these applications. But, um, but there are existing campaigns that are campaigning against the destruction of the NHS. So we do support uh, these campaigns. But more um, prominently, while UK PHM has been active right from the beginning through Global Health Watch and other uh, global advocacy campaigns, I think we the moment for revival of this movement was only around 2000, post financial crisis and after the rollout of austerity. So for uh, one issue that also helped us mobilize and come together was related to uh, the austerity uh, rollout and how people were being affected as with sort of the benefits and um, the government spending was being cut back in social and welfare services. What it was resulting in was uh, creation of greater levels of anxieties and mental health. But mental health services also were, being, were witnessing uh, cutbacks in, in funding. So the situation was that there were a number of different groups working on different uh, health issues that we were able to bring together to talk about. Issues that cut across the right to health. So while we were keen on talking about uh, how we can restore the earlier premise of the NHS, the foundations of the NHS. But we also wanted to understand how austerity is impacting uh, on uh, people more broadly. And that led to a first health assembly in Nottingham, a second health assembly in Musselburgh uh, in the UK, where a number of groups working on issues that as diverse as occupational health and the environmental impact on, on, on health the impact of fracking on health, to looking at specific issues around access to health services, uh, inequity, especially sort of the ethnic issues faced by ethnic uh, minorities in, in the community. So we had this health assembly which actually developed through uh, first the sharing of testimonies, the lived experiences of austerity cuts, and moving towards uh, uh, building the analysis and identifying what the uh, what can be done uh, about this? And there were a number of very exciting examples that came up. And that process has led to, at least in the Scottish context, has led to a development of a People's Health Manifesto, which has identified broader cross-cutting issues about uh, issues of poverty, about how um, certain basic fundamental rights to health care need to be restored, including to people who are in the margins, and especially those who are uh, completely slipping out of the existing social protection systems. And we realized uh, that we, the children of the Thatcher regime are now passing on that legacy and precarity to the children of austerity. So we are actually trying to uh, link these dots and identify what these uh, issues are. So for us, healthcare is an important right to health, care, free access to uh, publicly funded NHS is important. But equally important is aspects of inequalities and um, looking at how we can ensure the government's commit to the right to health in its most holistic sense and not only talk about introducing green spaces and doing more physical activity. I'm Anna Raja, I come from Croatia uh, and I've been involved with the PHM for about two years now. Locally, one of the most important topics that we're facing at the moment is uh, the health workforce crisis because we've lost a lot of nurses, especially, and then also doctors, uh, to migration, following uh, as well the uh, austerity measures and also the crisis in Europe. So uh, that is combined with the long-lasting privatization and commercialization trend that's present in the 
Croatian healthcare system. So uh, what has happened was that uh, after uh, the period in Yugoslavia, which was, uh, which was characterized by, I would say, a uh, social medicine movement, which uh, very much led to uh, primary healthcare being uh, affordable and accessible to anyone, uh, has developed into a system where uh, care, especially on the, on the primary level, is uh, very reduced and very, uh, very, very regionalized, so it's uh, very difficult to come across uh, specific services if you live in uh, different parts of Croatia. And so what, what we have been doing as part of the PHM and also of other local groups uh, is uh, building and strengthening education programs for both health workers who are involved in community activities, but also community groups uh, who are interested uh, into learning about healthcare, learning about the healthcare system and how it works, uh, in order to be able to engage with the system and, uh, well, fight for their rights uh, on their own terms. Uh, also, another part of the, of the activities that we do is uh, related to research. Uh, we also feel that uh, the healthcare sector has been ignored mostly by activists and organizers in Croatia for a long time, and that has led to a, a very large gap between the practices that are present in other fields and uh, the fight for uh, the right to health uh, inside the sector. So, uh, in, in co cooperation with other movements, we try to bring healthcare uh, on the agenda and just to show how healthcare is related to other parts of, uh, of, uh, so of, of society in general. Hi, I'm Lul from Italy. Uh, so, in Italy, as uh, in Spain, European countries. We uh, have had uh, this normally a universal uh, healthcare system since um, 1978, uh, but um, this, the healthcare system is becoming less universalist uh, day after day. Um, one of the main um, uh, things uh, that is happening at the moment, as in other countries, is uh, the progressive. Um, privatization of the system through especially uh, the progressive redu reduction of funds in the, of the, of the public health care system, um, with, which is resulting in a push towards the, the private system. Um, so the um, quality of uh, many people are uh, sort of uh, renouncing to seek care in, in the public health care system due to um, decrease in, uh, in its quality, uh, resulting, for instance, in long uh, waiting times and in, uh, uh, increased uh, out-of-pocket expenses. Uh, we also have several um, uh, issues related to precarity in the health workforce. Um, so who um, can afford it uh, um, is, is increasingly relying on the private healthcare system. Uh, which is again contributing to abolishing the, the, the public health care system. So this has been a big focus of the DHN uh, working uh, in Italy and uh, in uh, Europe in general. And um, another, as, as Anna will, uh, will say in a moment, um, another big issue is um, in Italy as in, in other countries such as Spain is um, the worsening of the <coughs> uh, right to health of migrants, as well as of uh, migrants uh, living in condition and situation overall. Um, this is uh, worsening at, at an accelerated um, uh, pace, um, yeah, pace um, uh, with the new uh, government uh, um, in, since March 2018, uh, through, um, uh, we, we all know, through measures such as closures of the ports of arrival, and, uh, and, and now um, other measures are being threatened, such as uh, serious reductions in funds allocated to uh, the um, service that are welcoming and, uh, um, uh, let's say, promoting the inclusion of, uh, of migrants and refugees in the Italy. So that's uh, another issue. Uh, hi, I'm Anna, also from Italy, um, part of the PHM. And I just want to share um, my experience in my everyday life since I'm attending 
GP school. And so I'm like kind of working inside the healthcare system, the public one. And uh, what I usually see every day is that many people like ask for medical needs which finally which are not uh, medical ones but most of them are social ones and the fact is that in Italy uh, we haven't a uh, strong like I would say we haven't any good uh, type of uh, welfare state uh, so the thing that happens that happens is that uh, the feelings, the needs are expressed, but in to a system who isn't able to attend them carefully. Uh, and the other problem I see, I feel, is that our society, I think in Italy, but I think it. Uh, it's very, it has been uh, made very individualistic, so we are like all apart and uh, the social problems we, it's, um, we feel probably are uh, due to a lack of sense of community and a lack of uh, feel we are in a community, many communities we live in. Uh, the good news <laughs> is that um, there are many movements uh, around the health issues and uh, I, I can maybe only name two, uh, which one is, one is uh, uh, that is becoming, is becoming uh, very strong at the moment and is a trans feminist queer movement. And the other is uh, the campaign, Dico 32, uh, which fights uh, for the universal coverage to the planet. I am Alexis from Greece. Uh, I am a member, founding member of the New Sense Movement and also in the International Association of Health Policy. Uh, first of all, just a few, a few words about the situation in Greece. The Greek system uh, was built as an hybrid between tax-based based, uh, national health system uh, and social security, social insurance schemes, and the private ones of this system. What happened during the crisis was that, first of all, as we know, we had a very deep crisis because of the global economic crisis in Greece. So we had a lot of, uh, we had 30% of unemployment. That means 30% of the population, the working population, didn't have any access to any service. One. Secondly, we had, and we still have, a big wave of refugees, especially from the Syria world, but, but not only, maybe from all North Africa. Uh, so with people that are coming, that are having needs of health care, and uh, this is also a grown problem. Uh, <coughs> in parallel, the, 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 point, the policies of austerity <coughs> drained the system from its personnel, from its infrastructure, so it had a very big crisis of the system per se. And as it was said, also we have a big wave of brain drain. I mean, especially doctors, medical doctors, especially medical doctors, are living by thousands. To European and not only countries for the future. So this was the, the case. Uh, the truth is that after 2015, the new government made some small but not overall uh, find some solutions. First of all, uh, all people, including the refugees, have access to the national health system. So that was a relief. Uh, but the problem is that, uh, as it was said, also in Greece, uh, the, new, uh, the new personnel is coming with precarity, so it is for two years, you know, contracts, so very short contracts, which are not giving a sustainability to the system. 
My point is, after having heard all the, the interventions, is that you can see that we are almost, almost in the same route. Of course, every country has its own tradition and so on. The, the European tradition, which is very important, and I think also it was very clear uh, speak, spoken here, is that the, the European tradition was the welfare state. Uh, and the, the, the services, the health has social rights in terms of access to, to services at least. And this was the European uh, idea uh, the last uh, 50 years. And what is important today is that Europe also is going uh, through and it's, it's having the same problems of all over the world, which are that there is no more space for public, there is no more space for social policies and profit is on top of everything. So in this way we have to, 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 to fight in a global fight and that's why we are here also. People say assembly which is an assembly of, 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 of the world, of the planet. And as a Europeans of course we have already a good group of European people set in, in Europe and we, are, we have to enforce our struggle in order to put health as a social right in Europe. In one important issue that we have, one important action that we have is every year the 7th of April, European mobilization for health. We need to see how vulnerabilities are being constantly created by the political economic fabric. And it's one of the same standard high risk groups of communities that we should be targeting who are excluded. We see an increase in the number of in the reliance on food banks in, in uh, the UK. Yeah. There are more people who are now actually having to go to food banks to, for food security and for nutrition issues. There are more people homeless. Among homeless people, they themselves, and through this whole participatory action process, one thing that emerged very clearly was that uh, what we understood as the vulnerable we, we clearly reified and homogenized their experiences. We are having these intersectional uh, inequalities that we need to address today. There are more people in homeless, among homeless people, one of the big concerns was the privatizing of the commons, of how the whole regeneration and planning activities in the UK now is with a lot of EU funding is actually resulting in changing public toilets into coffee shops and those kind of things. So we need to go back into the idea of universalism of health and social care right as a whole and talk about these issues of diverse exclusions. Yeah. And I think there are yeah, several things. Yeah. I think that, uh, maybe in Europe the concept of exclusion is a bit different to maybe how it is in other countries. But uh, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Um, in, in Europe, at least in, in, in Southern Europe, I think in general, um, the poorest people um, go less, even knowing that the going to the doctor is free, uh, they still will go less often than the uh, better off uh, families will go. And uh, they will access um, specific services that are um, not so, uh, maybe not seen as uh, primary you know, uh, health, uh, as such as. Uh, Psychosocial support, uh, mental health, uh, dentistry, um, physiotherapy. So all these um, services that are available, but in a much smaller scale than they would be normally um, uh, for for uh, wealthy families, they, they normally don't access them. So indirectly, yes, the services are there in a small um, uh, percentage. They are not widely available to everyone. But uh, even though uh, a lot of people will not go to those services, and uh, another issue uh, is that even if you don't have to pay anything uh, at the moment uh, of accessing the health service, you have to pay for the medicines, and you know that. Even if it's uh, as, um, a reduced price, you still have to pay for it. So a lot of people will not go to the doctor, or if they go to the doctor, then they will not um, go to get the treatment they are required because they know uh, it's just uh, too much money for them. And uh, there's no subsidies for that. You, the price you have to pay.
It is a no. co-payment. Co-payment. Yeah, the special payment. But up to 25% English. Yeah, but still you have to pay some right. finance. And the mm -hmm. other problem is that the percentage of the population that uh, it's uh, poor has increased dramatically in, in all of our countries. Yes. And a lot of people are ashamed of finding themselves in that position. They don't want to uh, tell all the people that are, are poor. So they are they are cutting on, on expenses, and one is uh, health expenses. The other one will be um, uh, other uh, elements that have impact their health, like uh, access to electricity, uh, heating in the winter, certain foods that are better for them. So all these things uh, do impact uh, their, their health. We, we want help for all now! Yeah.